Outside Tiara campus, eating pad thai with grace, aiming a fork of noodles directly into your mouth, gets progressively harder when there's tears blurring your sight and dampening your skin. Most embarrassing for her, while I didn't mind, crying in public places is an indulgent hobby of mine. When I was younger, I was very sensitive and I used to cry at anything, but I think as I've gotten older, I've just kind of <laughs> learned to be a lot more emotionally repressed. The year before last, I had a really shit year and I cried a lot that year, so <laughs> I feel like I just didn't have any um, salty water left in my head or something. Last year, I moved here and I went to art school and I was finally like, where I wanted to be and doing what I wanted to be doing. And I felt like I'd, I'd be wasting that chance if I yeah, acknowledged any kind of sadness or anything. The art form that I normally do, like visual art, like I'm able to be pretty removed from it. My art's still really personal and everything, but I just like people's eyes being on that and not on myself. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know the one. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll start back, like, way back. When I was younger, I used to always have this, like, dream of being an actress. In year 13, I got an opportunity to be in a New Zealand film. And it was, like, a tiny role. I was in two scenes with a couple lines, and I was, like, a supermarket checkout worker. <laughs> I thought it was quite, quite a big deal for me. Yeah, so I waited for this film to come out for like two years because like films take a long time to edit and stuff. But like I didn't tell anyone about it. I'd say like, oh, I hope I get cut out of it as like a kind of <laughs> falsely self-deprecating joke. It was at the New Zealand Film Festival. We got all dressed up and we bought a nice bottle of wine, me and, me and Violet. And as the film went on, I started to realise that... <laughs> that my scenes weren't in it <laughs> so I yeah I got cut out of it and there was one small part where you could hear my line um but there was no reverse shot so you couldn't actually see me yeah I hadn't realized until then like how how high my hopes had been and it just kind of crushed me for some reason and I just like bawled throughout the whole film and it was a beautiful film but I just like was feeling very self-pitying. As soon as we'd um, left the theatre, I was like to Violet, I, we've got to go somewhere, <laughs> like, I can't hold this in, so. We went to Midnight Espresso, which is our favourite place to go at night, and we just sat in the window and ate cake. We didn't say much, I think I just kind of cried, and lots of people walking past and stuff, and I just didn't give a shit, you know, like, I just let it out and I knew that it was kind of a dumb thing to be crying about but I just like let my feelings be valid in that moment. <laughs> when I think about it now it's, it's all pretty funny. It's almost like more of a memorable event now because that happened. It was actually like a really nice moment between me and Violet just sitting there and I'll always like remember that. I think I like crying, but I like don't, I don't like that I like crying. You know, I feel like I'm like fetishizing my own sadness or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's also weird because I guess I never really had like any like mental health stuff up until like two years ago. 
Mm. And back then I never really cried. And it's just like, it's weird like looking back and being like, was it wor was I worse off for being so like emotionally unavailable or am I better off? I remember when I first started to think like, oh, you're probably depressed is when like, there was a time where I felt like the nights were getting longer and the days were getting shorter and that I was forgetting who I was. When you start to cry, you don't feel good, right? Like you're crying because you're upset about something, but you always feel better afterwards. And I'm, I guess like I started crying more because it would help afterwards. But then I realized like I'm crying all the time now. It's like a drug or something. Like I got addicted to crying. <laughs> But no, I think it's I think it's a good thing. I can't imagine being any other way now. I definitely like try talk about that in my art that I make as well. This this the one this one's quite relevant. <laughs> it says Why are you crying? You a little bish. <laughs> I am not weak because I can express myself. So that's quite on topic, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the time I cried in the public. Time, yeah. um, it was probably about a year ago now. I was going through a really bad phase of just being, I don't know, pretty depressed and stuff, I guess. And I was really drunk one night. Yeah, I just walked to the corner of Cuba the night and day. And I just sat down and just bawled my eyes out, I guess. So I was just really sad. And I just kept crying until I eventually fell asleep. It was cold, but I don't know. It's weird. I've slept on the street a couple of times. And when I'm really sad, I feel like I sabotage myself. Like, I'm like, you deserve this. Like, you deserve to be sleeping here. I felt like crap after that night. Sometimes crying makes me feel better, but that was, it was really embarrassing. I guess like just all these random people like coming up to you like, are you okay? And it's like, you don't care. Like, you don't care. I walk past there all the time. And every time I look at it and I'm like, that that's, that's why I sat down and cried and fell asleep, drunk. Sometimes I'm like, you know, like it feels good. I'm like, I'm not there anymore. Sometimes I see it and I'm like, oh God, you fucking, you fucking idiot. Like I always have a connection with that fucking, with that wall and grounds that I was leaning, leaning on. Um, it's funny because I don't even consider how I feel about crying. I just sort of cry. It's just the same, I guess, as smiling or, or walking or laughing. It's just a human process. My relationship with my emotional self has grown to a point where it's a friendship and not just a, a dictatorship, I suppose. The cry. It feels important because it, it's one of the first fundamental cries that was more positive than it was negative. I had been in a relationship for last year and it was awesome. It was beautiful and lovely and I have so much respect for him. I had come out of a three or four month long relapse in my chronic fatigue syndrome and I had now, I'd grasped my energy again, I'd claimed it for myself and I was wanting to do the next really important steps for healing and for growth. Accepting a person for exactly what they are is the best way to love someone and doing that often entails having to let them go. Like, there's that saying, you know, if you love someone, let them go. And I always thought that was stupid, but it applies, it really, really does apply. On the Sunday, I trained down from Waikanae. 
to here and we met. We, yeah, we sat for hours, um, just being friends. We knew it was going to be the last time for a while. It was a stupid movie scene, thrilling. And we were sitting um, on the seat by the train and we were just listening to music together. And then my train came. <laughs> we hugged for a while actually. And it was one of those like pressure times because the, the last call was happening and the doors were about to close. And then yeah, I got on the train and took a seat and we waved goodbye, waved goodbye from the window and he waved goodbye from the platform and then I left. And then I think it had been 30 seconds, <laughs> it had literally been 30 seconds and I just felt this like unsurmountable amount of love. And so I just, I pulled out my handkerchief because I was prepared and I put in my songs that I love that always made me think of him and I just cried. It felt so good. And I didn't care because I was like, I love this person. I love him and he loves me and it's the truest thing I've ever felt. And I've just made the crazy sacrifice I never thought I would have to. And I love him, so I'll cry. I'll sit in this fucking seat in front of everyone and I will cry out of love. I think altogether I spent three days doing some really good crying. And by the end of those three days, I felt just the, the remnants of the love and I was ready to carry him in my heart and not in my mind anymore. And that was my cry. <laughs>